From drones to French food. Love French cuisine, but worried about packing on those pounds? Well, forget about the butter and the cream. Chef Michael Lakowitz, proprietor of Restaurant Michael and George Trois in Winneka, shows us how to create a flavor fit menu with some of your favorite French ingredients. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you for having me, absolutely. So a flavor fit menu, what exactly does that mean? All right, so the story goes, um, just about six and a half years ago, I got clean and sober and I was like 430 pounds. Yeah. So I got clean and sober and all the mirrors came back at my house and I realized this is gonna be a situation and it was. And um, so it took me a few years just to get my head wrapped around all that and I dropped the weight and I worked with a trainer and um, just about a year and a half ago, I decided I was gonna try and figure out how to incorporate a lot of this into French cooking because we're so burdened with this mm -hmm. butter, butter, cream, cream, butter, cheese, butter thing, and it's, it's not that way anymore, you know, not even in French cuisine. Plus, I'm Polish and Italian with an all Latino staff. We're like the mm -hmm. Statue of Liberty. There's very little, <laughs> the only thing French about the place is the food, but it doesn't have to be just riddled with fat in order to be French. So uh, the whole idea here is to kind of work around that fat concept and those mm -hmm. calorie concepts with creative ways of cooking. So by intensifying flavors and reducing the amount of moisture and intensifying the protein, uh, same thing can be said with vegetables, which is what we're doing with these beets. So I have yellow and uh, golden and red beets that we roasted, uncovered, mm -hmm. just spritzed with a little bit of oil and then salted in the, in the oven. And they went at 450 degrees for about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And then we'd let them cool and the skin peels right off and they're just left That's just easy. in this beautiful pristine state. And then you've got some cantaloupe in the This center. cantaloupe is actually a recipe that we have on the website as well. This is pickled cantaloupe. Mm -hmm. And it's pickled with rice vinegar and a, a couple different herbs and uh, some spices and a little bit of sugar. Mm -hmm. And you could substitute stevia or any kind of non-caloric non sweetener as well. But it's a really nice contrast because it's sweet and savory at the same time with the Roquefort cheese that we're we're going to incorporate into the dressing. Now, now this, this is actually interesting. this is really cool because right. this is a this is a great way to, to to pull away the fat but mm -hmm. intensify the flavor. This is this is a rope for cheese and cognac dressing. Okay. We reduce the cognac down to a syrup so there's no alcohol, and the, this is dehydrated rope for cheese powder. Kind of lift that so a little it's bit really it's really there. neat. This is kind of akin to what you would yeah, have uh, the flavoring powder that you would have on mm -hmm. chips or snacks, but this is 100% pure rope for cheese. We actually have to keep this under vacuum in the freezer so it doesn't clump up because there's no maltodextrin or anything like that to keep it from from clumping together but this is really lovely and when mm -hmm. it's in its powdered form you could sprinkle it on anything and it flavors or seasons rather than salt because that's really the key thing when you're making something that's a little bit of a lighter version of something right. you want it to taste good so what about some of the herbs here that you're so what i have here right? rather um this you could actually use any lettuce that you like for this salad okay. this happens to be baby baby mosh or lamb's tongue lettuce oh, and this is red vein sorrel sorrel is neat because it's got a really um somewhat bitter flavor profile. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit sweeter because it's in its micro form. And then when it's coupled with the cantaloupe and the rope for cheese, there's a synergy and it all just kind of works together. Sorrel works with vegetables. Uh, it also works with seafood. So in this case, what we're doing is we're just gonna use it as a little bit of a garnish mm -hmm. in and around the beets. And you can use any greens you like. I like baby frisee with this as well. Nice. But these, these guys are just really kind of pretty. And then you just drizzle everything on top? Well, we're gonna drizzle on top, but we're also gonna add some of these cantaloupe. There's your little sweetness. Well, not only sweetness, but it's got a little bit of acidity because there's rice That's vinegar right. in there. And we're just gonna do literally just drops of the dressing because a little bit goes a long way on this. See, this looks so nice it's as if you went to a restaurant, but this is at home. So you're making it really perfect. This is so simple <laughs> to do at home. And as long as your fingers are dry, which mine are not, mm -hmm. you can use just, just, just as if it was gonna be Beautiful. A seasoning right over the top. Beautifully. And it looks beautiful and it's great for the season. It's super refreshing. You could use it as an appetizer or an entree. Uh, with some, you know, this pickled cantaloupe works great with just sliced prosciutto or uh, cured meats. Well, thank it's you delicious. so much for coming. Absolutely, in. my pleasure. Thank you for having me.